Great morning and a blessed Sabbath to my dear brothers and sisters. It is so good when we can enter into the Holy Sabbath day. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 44. And it reads, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. The title of the message this morning is in agony. Bow your heads with me. Almighty God and our heavenly father, as I stand in your presence before your people this morning to bring a word from you, we pray that your Holy Spirit would take full control and we pray that your purpose will be accomplished. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew 26, beginning from 36. Matthew 26 and verse 36, and it reads, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And said unto his disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse 3, it says, then saith he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Here we see in these verses. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, a familiar place that Jesus would often go and spend time in prayer. But this time, Jesus is not there for the regular prayer. Uh, the Bible tells us that, that, that Jesus is sorrowful and, and, and he's heavy. And as he described it, his, his soul is even sorrowful unto death. When we think of Jesus, we think of him as the creator. We think about him as savior. But this is Jesus, the man. Here we see the humanity of Jesus being manifested in these verses. And Jesus is here and, and he's praying and, and he's, he needs his disciples to, to comfort him and, and, and to encourage him. And verse 39 says, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Here we see Jesus is, is, is in the garden of Gethsemane and he is struggling with the fact that he would have to die. Here we see that Jesus is, is actually saying he would prefer uh, uh, this thing to pass from him. But here we see Jesus is agonizing in the garden of Gethsemane as the weight of this entire world is upon his soldiers, his shoulder. And here he says he's heavy. And his soul, his soul is very heavy. When we think about Jesus, we oftentimes don't think about Jesus as one who was struggling with a decision, Strug struggling with the last temptation. This is the last and the final temptation that he's going through. Because after this, Jesus is going to Calvary. He's going to be crucified. And Jesus is aware of what is coming his way. And he's, he's, he's fearful of it. We're going to go back to Luke chapter 22 and verse 44. And it says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And here we see that Jesus is in agony, but being in agony, it does not cause him to give up. 
it causes him to pray more earnestly. And this is something that we should learn from Jesus is that when we are going through our agony experience, we must not give up, but we need to press on and we need to pray more earnestly than we have ever prayed before. And notice here, as he's praying, it says his sweat was it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. It's telling us the enormity of the pressure and the stress that Jesus was going through right there in the garden of Gethsemane. There was a program which aired between the years of 1961 to 1998. It was called the ABC Wide World of Sports. And this program would begin every week with the words, the trill of victory, the agony of defeat, the human drama of athletic competition. And, and this would feature some different athletes and, and, and it would show them how they were struggling uh, uh, in, in, in their pain and their agony. Uh, and some of them, were not able to, to, to be victorious, but they will still continue to press on amidst their, their, their struggles and the, the agony of pain. But here we see that Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane. This is not the wild word, wild word of sports, the wild world of sports, but this is the wide world of the great controversy. This is Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. And here he is fighting the battle, the most important battle of the, of the, of the universe. He's there fighting this battle because in that garden, Jesus is there agonizing whether or not he will go through with the plan of salvation. There is a physical, a rare physical condition a phenomenon known as hematathosis, in which on the emotional stress, great emotional stress, the tiny blood vessels uh, uh, in the sweat glands would rupture and produce a mixture of blood and sweat. This is what Jesus experienced. He experienced this for my salvation, for your salvation. Jesus was there in the garden and he was agonizing and he was pressing on through prayer. He, 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 in order for him to endure, he had to, he had to spend time in prayer. Jesus knew that this was not a time to give up. And he got there and he prayed because his will was standing in the way and, and self was standing in the way. And Jesus knew that if he must go through with the plan of salvation, his will had to, 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 to be crucified and, and, and the will of the father had to be the most prominent. He had to take on the will of the father. And here we see Jesus praying, Father, not my will, but let thy will be done in the garden of Gethsemane. It was a prayer for strength. Not only was it a prayer for strength, but it was a prayer. It was a prayer for him to submit himself. It was a prayer of surrender. And sometimes when we are going through our agony, we need to pray that prayer of surrender. Whereas that we are not fighting, we are not contending for ourselves, but we are surrendering to whatever the will of the Father is. Because there's sometimes that there are things that we don't want to do, even though we know we should, but we are there wrestling. And Jesus was in the garden wrestling, but he came to the point there he recognized that his will was to do the Father's will. And, and under normal circumstances, Jesus would always say, my will is to do the will of the Father. And even though he was in agony, even though he was under heavy pressure, Jesus did not stray away from the Father's will. He submitted himself to the Father's will. And when we submit ourselves to the Father's will, things will happen. Just this week, actually last week, uh, 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 some person called me for counsel. Uh, they were going through um, a crisis and 
And, and they said to me that they're not going to do anything. They're not going to fight. They're just going to let it go. And I want you to know that they called me back this week after I, I, I told them God is going to come true for them. And they called me back to let me know that things work out and that God fought their battles for them and they got the victory. And I'm saying that what happens when we stop fighting and we allow God to fight for us, God will come true and God will give us the victory. Oftentimes when we think about Jesus, we think about Jesus gaining the victory upon the cross at Mount Calvary. But I'm here today to let you know our victory was not won on Calvary. It was not won on the cross. Our victory was fought in the Garden of Gethsemane. The victory was won in the Garden of Gethsemane through the prey of surrender. Jesus was strengthened by angels in his weakest moment as he was pressed down uh, with all the things that were going on where our soul salvation was concerned. But Jesus got the victory. Somebody ought to say amen. But normally, we don't focus on Gethsemane. We focus on the cross. But I'm here this morning to inform some and to remind others that if there was no Gethsemane, there would have been no cross. And there would not have been a, a, a crucifixion. But because of Gethsemane, because Jesus endured through prayer in Gethsemane, it gave him the strength. It helped him to surrender his will. And he got the victory. And because he got the victory, he was able to go to the cross. It wasn't the nails that held him uh, uh, to the cross. He was not fastened there and secured by the nails, but he was secure there on the cross to pray, true surrender pray. He was fastened to the pray on the cross because he was committed. Yes, he was committed to the will of the Father. He was committed to the plan of salvation, and that's what kept him on the cross when he surrendered and got the victory in Gethsemane. We serve a mighty God. I don't know about you, but I, I, I am happy to know that Jesus, Jesus agonized and Jesus went through what he suffered and he did it for us. In the book of Philippians, it tells us that Jesus counted at all the joy. Jesus humbled himself. He, he humbled himself as a man and he died because he knew that our soul salvation depended upon him. As Jesus, as Jesus continued to pray in, in, in Gethsemane, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us in verse 43 of the same Luke chapter 22, it says that there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that when we pray, when we are serious about praying, God will send his angels and his angels will come and strengthen us. I want you to know that God has angels even today that is watching over us as his children. Yes. And when we are in our difficulties, yes. when we pray and we look to Jesus, yes. the angels Amen. will come and the angels will help us. Amen. I want to turn to Ooh. the spirit Ooh. of prophecy in the book called Pray, penned by Ellen G. White. And it says here in Pray, the book Pray, chapter 25, the chapter is entitled Angels and Pray. And it says God sends reinforcements of angels to our aid in answer to prayer. Somebody ought to say amen. It says if Satan sees that he amen. is in danger of losing one's soul, he will exert himself to the utmost to keep that one. And when the individual is aroused to his danger and his distress and fervor, looks to Jesus for strength, Satan fears that he will lose one captive and he calls a reinforcement of his angels to hedge in the poor soul and from a wall of and form a wall of darkness around him that heaven's light may not reach him. But if that one in danger 
perseveres and in his helplessness casts himself upon the merits of the blood of Christ. Our Savior listens to the earnest prayer of faith and sends a reinforcement of those angels that excel in strength to deliver him. Satan cannot endure to have his powerful rival appeal to. For he fears and trembles before his strength and majesty. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. At the song of fervent prayer, Satan whole host trembles. Somebody ought to say amen again. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. You notice amen. what happens when God's people enter into fervent prayer. It causes Satan to tremble. It causes his host to tremble. And I'm saying that we as God's children, we need to continue to make Satan tremble. Amen. He continues to call legions of evil angels to accomplish his object. And when mm. angels, all powerful, clothed with the armor of heaven, come mm. to the help of the fainting pursued souls, Satan and his host fall back, well mm. knowing that their battle is lost. Yes. The willing subjects of Satan are faithful, active, and united in one object. And although they hate and war with one another, Yet they improve every opportunity to advance their common interests, and, and and sometimes we don't we don't recognize that that the the those, those um those evil angels don't like one another, but they unite together for a common cause. We as hey. God's people, we need to continue to unite for a common cause because we are on the winning side somebody ought to say amen amen the great commander in heaven and earth has limited satan's power satan has no power except amen. god gives it to him and yes. you know as i say that my mind goes back to job they got the uh um satan had to come to god and beg actually beg for permission to torment job's life and, and, and God gave him permission. And sometimes when we are going through our hardships and we don't understand what's going on, we should not give up. But we need to continue to press on knowing that God is in charge and knowing that God has limited Satan's power and there's so much that Satan can do and no more. And we know the story so well of Job that Satan came and he tried some all sorts of stuff to Job and Job was in great agony, but Job did not give up. Job did not give in. Job continued to endure because he had a relationship with the Lord. And in the words of Job, he says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Job continued to worship the Lord. I don't care what, what, what condition we are in. I don't care whatever we are facing. We as God's people, we got to continue to worship God in the good times and in the bad times. We got to continue to pray in the good times and the bad times. We got to continue to trust Jesus when things are going well and when things are not going so well, we got to continue to trust him. We must continue to pray because prayer is our strength. We got to continue to pray because if we pray, we can endure. But if we don't pray, we cannot endure just like Jesus. Jesus was able to endure and got the victory because Jesus prayed. He got strength. He, he surrendered himself and he was able to win the victory. And as I said earlier, the victory was not won on the cross, but the victory was won and secure in the garden of Gethsemane. But Jesus went to the cross. Yes, he went to the cross to save our soul salvation. It was confirmed. Victory was confirmed at the cross after Jesus got the victory, after Jesus endured true prayer. And that's a lesson for us because Jesus endured true prayer, not as the son of God, not as, uh, as the divine being, but he endured as a human being. And that's why we can look to Jesus because we find strength in him. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Let us continue to trust the Lord. Let us never give up, regardless of how life's problems might press us down, and regardless to how much agony we are in. Victory, victory is ours in the name of Jesus. There are angels that excel in strength and power and might that God will send to our aid. We are not alone. We are not alone. Let us continue to fight uh, the good fight of faith. Let us continue to endure, and we can only endure through prayer. Hey, how about today? Bow your heads with me. Ooh. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Jesus, our Savior, Amen. Holy Spirit, our Comforter, we pause to say thank you. Amen. Thank you for your word, and thank you for for knowing that Jesus is all that we need. We are thankful to know that you have given us a gift called pray. And when we exercise that gift and we use it, we can endure all circumstances. So Lord, help us as your people to remember that we have the greatest weapon uh, that, 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 that we can use and it's called pray. Help us, dear God, to always remember that men are to pray. Your people are to pray and not faint. And once we continue to pray always, we will have the victory in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to remember that the angels that you have to dispatch as reinforcements, as long as we pray and we continue to be faithful in prayer, the angels will come to our aid to strengthen us, just as angels came to the aid of Jesus to strengthen him. And that was not the first time when angels came to strengthen Jesus. When he was in the wilderness being tempted, angels came and strengthened him. And that is a, is a, a reminder to us that angels are always available to strengthen your children. So help us, Lord to continue to endure through prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.